Here you go. All right, so we're going to record this session. This is Mrs. Martin from Boulder Universal. Welcome. We're going to do a session today on how to take notes for your online classes. Um, this is a really important study topic that um, students sometimes miss, and so it's a great thing for us to go over uh, once a semester or so to make sure that everybody remembers to take notes and a variety of different ways of taking notes so that we can find a manner that works for every student. So that's what we'll be covering today. All right, so let's take a look at what are our reasons for taking notes. Um, there are actually some really fantastic studies that have been done on note taking, um, both in the way that people take notes for materials that they're reading. So as you're reading through your content for any of your classes, I know that with online classes you have a lot of reading to do. It's just kind of the nature of the beast of uh, how we end up writing classes for online is that you end up doing a, a bit of textbook reading and that sort of thing. And absolutely that's a place where you do need to be taking notes. The other place that you would normally take notes is in a lecture type of scenario, which you don't have as much in online, although we do end up including some videos in some of our classes. And some of our classes also have podcasts that are included with them. But that's a skill that's used more frequently in the traditional classroom environment, which even if you're in school full-time online now, you may end up being in a classroom in, say, a college setting. So you absolutely want to have this skill of how to take notes, both when you're reading material and when you are listening, listening to material as well. It will increase your comprehension. It will improve your retention of the material, and that's really important because what that means is that you're learning more and you're remembering more. Also, your notes themselves become a study tool. You can use that tool for when you're preparing for exams and quizzes that are coming up, and so they become a brand new document that you can use over and over again. Um, those are fantastic for sharing with other students. So let's say that a classmate misses a class and might come to you and say, hey, could I borrow your notes so that I can see what I missed? That's a great opportunity for you to network with your classmates and share information. It's also a great tool that you can use when you're working with a study group. So let's say that you have four or five students who come together and decide that they're going to study and prepare for an exam. Or let's say that they're going to uh, work together on a particular presentation or project for class. If each of you brings your notes with you, as you're going to work on that, you'll find that um, different people take notes in different ways. And sometimes we don't end up putting down all of the information that's needed within our notes. So that can be really useful for gaining more information by sharing your notes with others. Taking notes also helps to clarify and organize your ideas, which is very useful, particularly for people who um, have difficulty with organization. They also create a consistent study pattern for students, which can decrease anxiety and stress about going to class and about studying and about preparing for exams as well. The more consistent study patterns that you have, the easier that school can be for you. So that is the long list of why we take notes. There we go. So let's take a look at one type of note taking that we can do. This is called three column notes. And as you'll see, I actually gave you three different examples for three column notes. Um, the top one up here is uh, where I have the reasons for independence as our major point, and then the minor and supporting point or the, is the desire for economic freedom, and then the source would be the common sense pamphlet. So you'll see under that, that's something that I might use as I'm reading through material. So let's say that I'm, I'm reading a textbook and it has an excerpt from the Common Sense pamphlet that references uh, some of the reasons for uh, the colonial period, Americans wanting independence, and that one of the minor details or the supporting details of that is their desire for economic freedom from England at the time. So I'm writing this down in a manner that uses the three column notes of where I have my major points on the left, my supporting points in the middle, and my source on the far right. That makes my information very useful from the beginning and very organized. If you look in the center of the screen here, you'll see a second type of three column note taking. And what we have here is the KWL chart. This is where on the left you put down what you, what you know about a particular topic. 
In the middle, you write down what you want to know about a particular topic, and typically that's going to be posed as a question. And then on the far right, you will write down what you've learned. So the KWL chart is fantastic for demonstrating your learning process as you're going through it. So as you're learning, we have an example that's listed here. So I know that women in America got the vote in 1920. This is on the national federal level. But what I want to know is what was that amendment process? So I know that it was the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, but I want to know what was that process? What did that process look like? So you'll notice here that on the right I have my learned box, which is open. And as I learn about this process, I would fill in information in that learned box. So that's the KWL chart. And then on the bottom here, this is a chart that I recommend to students as they're doing research projects. And what I recommend to students is that as they're going through each of their sources, that they're looking for facts, quotations, and then they're listing out all of the information that would go into their MLA Works Cited page for each of their sources. So you'll notice here we have on the left, we have facts, which are the 35 uses of the aloe vera herb. And then we have a quotation in our central or in our um, center column here, which is a quote that the aloe can be beneficial for burns especially. So we have a great quote that we can use about aloe. And then on the far right, we have the source. So you'll notice that we have all of the information, first and last name of the writer, name of the book, name of the publisher, and the year of publication. It's great to put all of that information into your right column on your three column notes so that when you go to write up that work cited page for your paper, you've got everything you need right there available. So three column notes, I definitely recommend this to anybody. Um, I think that they can be done in a variety of different ways. You're looking at three ways here. So definitely a very useful way of taking notes. Let's take a look now at outlines. Regardless of what your style of note taking is, regardless of what your thought process is, regardless of what your learning style is, I tell students absolutely unquestionably you have to learn how to do an outline. And the reason is because outlines are used in such a wide variety of places. Um, you'll be in professional experiences where you need to create outlines. Uh, you'll be in personal experiences where you may need to create outlines. And it's a process that makes a lot of logical sense. And so you'll need to use this even if it's outside of your note taking that you're doing uh, as you're working through your classes. You'll see that we have the exact same outline on both the left and the right sides of the screen here. On the left, I've left everything in black. So you'll see here that we have our two major points of Jane Austen's novels as number one. And number two are the Bronte sisters' novels. Okay, and then under Jane Austen, we have our three examples, Pride and Prejudice, Emma, and Sense and Sensibility. You'll notice that those are indented from the point where Jane Austen's novels started. And then indented further are the details under Pride and Prejudice. So we have our two main characters, Elizabeth and Darcy, and then under that we have three themes that are listed, which are classism and women's options. So you'll see here that this indentation pattern is very important for outlines. It demonstrates importance and value of particular facts that you're using within an outline. You'll notice under number two here, under the Bronte sister novels, we have the two example novels, Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights. And under Jane Eyre, you'll see two of the indentations for items number one and two, for Jane and Edward, who are the two main characters, and then three themes that are covered within this novel, which are classism, sexism, and violence. Over on the right side, this is something that I've done in the past to appeal to my visual learners is to take outlines and create them in the exact same manner that you normally would for any other kind of outline assignment, but then go through and color code them. So if you'll notice, our major points under our Roman numerals 1 and 2 are in red. Our moderate leveled items are in purple. So Pride and Prejudice, Emma, Sense and Sensibility, Jane Eyre, and Wuthering Heights. Those are all of our books. Those are in purple. And then we've got in green, we have our major characters in green. And then in light blue there, we've got our themes. For a person who is very visual, who has a hard time differentiating the value of information on a black and white screen, using a color coding system can really make a huge difference for that person. Um, but you're still using that traditional outline. 
So if this appeals to you, it's something that I would definitely recommend that you consider using in your own note taking. Okay, our third method that I'm going to show you today is a graphic organizer. I'm certain that you've seen graphic organizers on many different occasions, especially as you're planning for papers and projects. This is one that I created here using a website called uh, bubble.us. You see the URL that there up in the top inside of parentheses. And you'll notice that this is a traditional map. Um, it's actually called a few different things. It can be called a map or a cluster or a tree. Um, they, they're all basically the same kind of graphic organizer of where you take your major points, you put it in the center there, you put your moderate points, your medium level points outside of it, and then outside of each of those you have your details. So you'll notice that we have hiking as our major point, and then for our medium level points we have hiking in summer, hiking in winter, and hiking in fall. And then for our details, we have our specific details for the different seasons. So for summer, you're going to plan for heat, plan for dehydration, and plan for summer animals that are going to be out and about as you're hiking. Well, those experiences are going to be very different from winter hiking. We'll notice that our details here are planning for snow, plan for cold winds, and plan for low temperatures. So a very different hiking experience, and so we have very different kinds of details that we would want to include on our graphic organizer. This is a fantastic website that allows you to physically move all of these items around, color code them in a wide variety of different ways, and include as many bubbles as you want to on there. And then this is what I did here. I just took a screenshot and cut that screenshot down using paint into a small image. This image could then be submitted as an assignment or saved on your computer as your notes that you would then use later on for studying. So great using graphic organizer tools. For virtual notes, some students take virtual notes but they will use just their computer as opposed to doing things by hand. You can create an audio file using Vocaroo and you'll see the URL that I've saved there on the top left for you in blue. Or you can create a video file using Screencast-O-Matic, which I've saved on the top right. Either of those programs, they're both free and they're both fantastic to use. So if you haven't tried those out, give them a shot. You may find that you really like taking your notes virtually. Many other programs and tools that you use, like your Kindle, will allow you to type notes right within the text. I checked out Schoology and I could not find this feature within Schoology, uh, but I expect that they may be adding in such a feature at some point in the future. But I know that on Kindle and on my Nook as well, um, I can take virtual notes using both of those programs. Great way to take down information and to have it directly inside of the text, which I find to be particularly useful. You can also use a writing tablet and stylus pen to create a handwritten document that you can then save as a document on your computer. And you can take handwritten notes and then take photos using your um, cell phone or uh, camera to then upload onto your computer and then take a look at those notes in a virtual manner as well. Taking a look at resources, here are a few different resources that students might want to look into. I've got a WikiHow article on how to write an outline. We've seen Bubble US already. You've seen the outcome of how interesting that that looks. Uh, Microsoft Office also has templates. They have dozens of templates on this website, the third URL down. Um, several dozen templates that are interactive that you can use to um, create your notes and save them onto your computer as individual files. You can also use programs like PowerPoint or Word, or you can go very old-fashioned and use 3x5 cards or notebooks. A lot of people like those. You've got your audio file, such as Vocaroo, or of course the video file of Screencast-O-Matic. And within Google Drive, you have several different options that allow you to take notes, such as creating a document, a presentation, a drawing, or a spreadsheet. All wonderful tools for taking notes. So let's take a look at student expectations. At Boulder Universal, all of our students are expected to read all of the assigned materials and take notes on what you read. Listen to all of the assigned materials, such as videos and podcasts, and take notes on what you listen to. Make sure that you're using your notes as a tool for studying before quizzes and exams. Okay, it's definitely an expectation for all students to take notes for all classes. It can be very useful in improving your comprehension and uh, your learning throughout your classes. If you have any questions, please contact me. Otherwise, thank you so much for showing up today. I hope you got something out of this and have a wonderful week. Thanks.